Hello and welcome to the Semi-Toxic Podcast, only Semi-Toxic. There's worse things for you out there, arguably, with Dead Slayer 54 or James. Aragul 54. And Kai, and I don't have a 54, sorry. We should make another 53 Kais and then we'll have 54. Yeah, anyway, sorry. We, <laughs> we wrote topics and the host, me in this case, we wrote topics and the host will pick them using a random generator. And today we'll be talking about video game ideas. I have a <laughs> whole uh, random like story ideas sheet that's over 50 pages long, and at least two of those pages are for video games. And this Point podcast Jesus, is over. Dear sure. <laughs> God. Anyway, Kai, do you have a straight-up college thesis on this subject already prepared? Uh, no, not compared to her. <laughs> Maybe you should go with Mario first, because she clearly wants to play. So I, I have some ideas, but I want to hear something. I want to hear something. Hers is going to take a while to load. Not only does her Wi-Fi suck, there is a lot of data. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay I'm... Yeah. Just, just do it. <laughs> Okay. That's one single You're idea. Starting with VR Dogfight MMORPG. But... Sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> VR Virtual Reality Dogfighting Simulator, like airplanes and stuff, MMORPG. Oh my god, I thought you meant like dogfighting as in like... As I in didn't like... hear the VR <laughs> bit. I just yeah. heard like dogfight MMO. I'm just like, oh my god, like, damn, I didn't know you were so... The most graphic yeah. game ever to be made. We just... We vi- just finished a podcast no, saying that we shouldn't no, like that we shouldn't have dogs. <laughs> Be an have asshole animal to dogs. your animals today. Yeah. Dog fight simulator. God Love damn, your dogs. Dude. Give your dogs extra. I mean, betting on I'm dogs is a pretty lucrative fight. Game. And then you can use realistic <laughs> physics, but have you from like have the player do the POV of the plane, and you'd give you make everyone car sick. It'd be great. Mario, right, do you do you have you not been on the internet? There's like five of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, literal. There's, like, this was Google from Earth. like. There's been those for a long time. That was like one of the first simulators in general in VR, right? Then like, ha- like World of Tanks or yeah. whatever. Oh no, that's not maybe that, not that, explicitly that, World of Tanks, bro, but that like World tank of games where you're just rolling around as a tank and you blow stuff up. Oh, that tank was games, around sure, for a long time. Sure, but I'm talking about time. airplanes. No, the first that's simulators. Not, not tanks. Some of the first simulators were airplane dogfighting games. Like, like when did before... Flight Simulator come out? Dude, Flight Simulator came out in like the ni- in like the nineties, okay. like early nineties. Simulator, sure, but like VR. Well, like Virtual it's depending on you mean because they've always had VR ones in arcades and like and like tech demos. But you mean yeah? I mean like but... something you put on an Oculus headset. Yeah, well they have that now. Like the one that I, I I can I can name one right now. Like um, Project Wingman. What? I, Project Wingman is a great one. It's like it's like Ace Combat, but um, oh, okay. but VR, yeah. Microsoft Flight Simulator initial release date August eighteenth, twenty twenty. No, that's dumb. That's bullshit. I played it when I was like, yeah. No, that is bullshit. That, <laughs> what? What is? Where is the full thing? Is entry that in is Microsoft bullsh- Flight Simulator? Bro, it's series, like the forty in nineteen eighty two. Okay, there okay. you go. Okay, that's more They're like it. Li- that's more like yeah. it. I was like, this, this is bullshit. <laughs> that's bullshit, man. You you just like a Mandela effect, man. I'm like, there's no way, dude. I played that when I was a kid. <laughs> Dude, like I, I remember, I remember playing like a fucking wireframe flight simulator. That one was funny because I couldn't figure out where I was, and I just always bombed myself on the runway just for fun. That's a mood. <laughs> so so cool. anyway, apparently Marigold was trying to uh, rip off a of flight simulator from 1982. Yeah. <laughs> Her idea came first, clearly. And we have murder the board Obviously. game. Murder the board game teaches people forensics by having them hide a body. That's just clue. That's who has murder. no forensics in it? What do you mean? <laughs> oh yeah, well who you you have to look up clues. You have to find out what the murder weapon was. Where? No, you happens. don't. You stand in a room and shout accusations until the murderer just goes, "Ah, eh, you got me." Exactly. Yeah, pretty much. That's all. It's that all circumstantial not anyway. You uncultured swine. <laughs> forensics anyway, is all circumstantial Kai, anyway. Escape have any from Pompeii. Game ideas? I have a lot of game ideas as well. I didn't write a thesis about it like she did. <laughs> oh, you don't have to. You can just like go over the general idea, general concept. She could have right, just well, said flight simulator, and that would have been the whole thing. Fifty-four pages done. Oh, my, I, I, it's not very funny, but like one of the things I wanted, is I wanted to, as I wanted a game where it's like this is this is where my really 
fucking nerdy side comes in. But I wanted a really? game where it's like where it's like you start out in the Stone Age at, with a tribe. And they, there's games like this, of course, but I wanted everything to come naturally. So like, you know, um, in order to like learn, in order to like, in order to be like good hunters, you have to go after like a jaguar. If the jaguar kills your guys at first, then you learn fear of jaguar, and you and you revere them as something, and you might like learn that there's something scary to be scared of that you tell your kids. But if you kill one, then you might go like, oh, we've conquered the jaguar, and you become a more brave tribe, and stuff like that. And then if one of your people dies, one of them just, you know, you just take over to another one. So instead of it being like a tactical thing, it's like, it's like first person type of deal. So instead of like Age of Empires, you're, you mean more kind of like just virtual villagers, but insane. Yeah, so there's actually a game really close to it, but a little... It's a little different because it take because it's like human it's like it's like our ancestors like ten million years ago, so it's a little different, okay. you know. And, yeah, but there's a game that's no, called Ancestors: Humankind Odyssey, and it's a cool game. It's basically the same thing where like you you play as one. It's it, obviously this is our ancestors, so you're like you know back to monk, and then it's like you go and it's literally like you go and you learn how and you know you learn how to like craft spears. You go fight. Things and and they only you only learn these skills from doing it, you know. So if you if you fail, then you're dead, and then it goes to the next person. And it's really it's really good. And I and I was really happy when that came out, but I wish it was like, you know, Stone Age, so that you can like build your tribe up and eventually like you know, you know if if you also go by like the, the materials you got. So like, you know, a lot of games have a tier system, but I don't. I like, fuck that because that's not how humans work. You know what I mean? We don't have tier yeah, systems. Yeah, that's not how like the materials and stuff work either. It's exactly. Like, it's um like if why you, did there's they a lot of stone, iron from bronze stone. because exactly it was easier to find than tin. Yeah, and look like here in Japan, like one of the biggest, the biggest building ever created in the world at the time. Like if you base on everything besides like the pyramids, was in Japan. It was made completely out of wood. Yeah. You know, and so like it's it's possible. You know. They didn't. They didn't have good iron. It's kind of like another interesting stone, thing yeah. to think about for like that game idea of yours being yeah. like if you go for the stronger materials because you know we know of the stronger materials. Yeah, but exactly. Like, so if as such you go for the stronger materials at first, then you can go to the stronger buildings at first, but you won't like get the proper infrastructure like understanding of the previous. Yeah. Materials. Don't have the proper foundation. Exactly. Yeah, you won't exactly. know about like the stuff you can do with wood because you went straight to stone. Exactly, and I like that organic way of doing it because I I really like these games that that are there are plenty of like nowadays like when I thought about this yeah. obviously before that but now there are plenty of like you know start off uh, just in the Stone Age or just or like at least go to the Iron Age or something but none of them are organic they're all like um, they're all like tier based you know like oh you know, yeah you have it's to like go, you have you know. like your rock and then you need to like make stone axe to be able to like make iron axe and then you know just go up the tiers exactly like like look at the look at the um the mayans and the aztec they they were they had huge cities of stone but they had no metal basically they had metal but they, they not, not like, yeah, in warfare not in warfare <laughs> yeah not in warfare because they didn't have yeah. enough and same with the japanese the japanese never had good steel so they had to create techniques to make their steel better you know yeah, and that's like, yeah. Ton of, and however many times they had to fold it, which apparently most of those were, folds were not actually that necessary. But my God, did they put in so much effort to make oh, beautiful blades? Oh, definitely. And it's just and it's just always cool. Um, so that's my idea. Like that's that's I know that that that's one of those things where like, I would never have the skills <laughs> to do not this. Out in my first, like, 10. Well, I just I just it's wanted to really like, <laughs> thank you. Like I I, yeah. I mean it's one of those I I've thought about this, this single that. one for like many years. It's just my. Well, my ideal game in general is that kind of thing. Is that I really like, I personally like open world, open ended games. Like right. when I say open world, I want the world, like the world responds to me. Yeah. You know, I right. like that. Yeah. Or what's happening, and or what's happening around it. You know, and and I, there's a lot of games now that are like that. Like I really like Mountain Blade. That's a cool thing. It's like you know, there could be a little more, but it's it's just those are the kinds of games I like. I backed a really cool idea game, and it's my it was my first failure of backing and it was like okay. a space one where you were just out in space and it was tactical you could deal with your crew and it just completely just everyone disappeared like they kept on pretending that the game was going for years 
and then it just disappeared. And it was it got so hyped. It was it was so sad that it never happened. And it had a cool yeah, setting. I'm sorry, man. Nah, it's it happens. It's begging. So yeah, that's my idea. <laughs> that's a, those are my ideas. Right. Valid idea. <laughs> well, then Thank I you. skipped all the way to my more fleshed out ideas, skipping like ten of them. Let's hear. <laughs> but Slayer, maybe you should go first. <laughs> I mean, like, which? How much time do we have? Oh, we, that's how go. I need to just discern. Just go. Just go for it. Just go for it. Just just go go? it. Yeah. Just go yeah, for we, it. Okay. Yeah. We could do a part two if, to go over more of my ideas if yeah. we need to. So a lot of my ideas, I like to make my ideas in like completely unfeasible because that's where the fun lies. Oh hell when, yeah, dude! <laughs> yeah, when imagination is your only limit because you just completely ignore technical like the technical requirements oh, of to course. make any of this even possible. Yeah, but ignoring yeah. your limitations. Uh, there was this uh, zombie game that I wanted to make where it's like oh, you yeah. know, like I remember World playing zombie apocalypse. With you. Yeah, hmm. and so I have that on my idea sheet. <laughs> oh, nice. You have his idea on your idea sheet. <laughs> Get yeah, it together, excuse you. Theft. Yeah, we we worked on it. Uh, or quote unquote worked on it. We talked about it a lot, and <laughs> um, so the idea was basically also kind of open world, basically simulator because it's not exactly oh, yeah, yeah, like course. you know, f there's a zombie apocalypse. You must find the cure. It's like there's a zombie apocalypse. You do you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that kind of idea. And yeah, so it's like you can basically uh, project zomboid it where you try to like avoid the zombies and like try to just scrounge enough to survive and try to stay like find somewhere somewhat safe. Mm -hmm. You could like try to, you know, make your way across the city, try to find like a safe spot or whatnot, because the way one of the things that made this completely unfeasible was I unfeasible. my idea heavily banked on the idea of AI and like good AI and a lot of <laughs> randomness. So oh, of course. when <clears throat> basically everything right? Exactly. I'd like so, that. That, that kind of, that's the kind of thing I love. Yeah. So when the zombie apocalypse occurs, first off, each game is different, just intrinsically different. There is a different, like, there's a bunch of various strain types. Like, it could, it could go on the, like, the more fantastical sort of, like, you know, uh, there could be, like, somehow there could be magic zombie. in the game, and, like, it could be, like, a necromancer, in which case, that game, you might have access to, like, the occult, whereas you normally wouldn't have access to that because that's normally not a thing. And I say that or as an occult. Or it would be radiation, or it would be aliens, or it would be mm. more exactly. realistic. So, you know, mm, fantastic mm. stuff like that. Or more realistic, yeah. like, say, it could be a parasite, where it could be, like, World War Z, where parasite, if you somehow virus, got, like, bacteria, internally... fungus. Exactly. Mm. And it, the, depending on the different types of infections, it can determine whether or not there is a cure or a means of curing it, whether like or not there is means of, like, hiding from them. Like, uh, when I saw World War Z, I loved the, like... It was like a parasite, and so when you were like, if you hadn't like a uh, terminally like a terminal. terminal illness, even though it's curable because we had the cure, they only yeah. saw that you were terminally ill. You were not a compatible yeah. host. They would just ignore you, so you were yeah, hidden. Yeah. <clears throat> and so like that's that would be f possible if that was what you rolled. You wouldn't know this, of course, unless you you know looked in the console. But like. So you would have to, you have no idea what you're up against. Like even if you you played the yeah. game like a bunch of times, you have zero clue whether they can walk or run, whether they can see yeah. or smell, whether it's gonna be like 28 that. days later or just shamblers, and you like don't that. know what. If it you is. can make a vaccine, if you can make a cure, if you how if the vet, if the thing is transferred by air, by water, by bite, by mosquito, by magic. I really like, love that idea. Don't, that sounds really, really cool. You really don't know even how to survive because it could be anything. Instant. So, I like that. It's kind of like Fast with Fast with Phobias where you got to figure out where it's different each time and you got to figure out what exactly you need to do to all the, all the rules. Yeah, like, but it's randomly world. done. Yeah, yeah. That, that sounds a great so, idea. I like that. And so it was like the idea was just like basically open world survival game of like I wanted it to be be like kind of more on the realistic side. So like when you're crafting guns and whatnot, you needed like the various gun parts and like kind yeah. of like a very simplified version of building guns. 
so that yeah, yeah. like you know if you were ever like looked at a gun and like saw one disassembled you would know how to like disassemble to clean it and reassemble it you might not be able to build it from scratch like in the game but you Do know you, mean, you like, would have, like, you need, you need like a gun slide and stuff like that yeah, yeah. because if uh. you went in too much details especially because like specific guns are like copywritten that's why like a lot of games have the made up names for the guns that yeah, yeah, resemble that. real I was guns. You getting like arrested for teaching people how to make pipe bombs that too uh, <laughs> oh but, come on yeah. there's plenty of games that allow you to do that i mean fuck you do so that in like, last of us <laughs> yeah so it's like stuff like that uh when the when the um initial like when the initial uh, outbreak occurs <clears throat> then how that's usually the most dangerous part of the the yeah. the most dangerous part of the game is starting out because oh, yeah, that's I'd love that. panic. you got to get away yeah exactly if you even can or at least you have to find a means of bunkering down in your house and hope that that's okay so like when supposing that the outbreak you know occurs and everything like kind of settles down a bit like everyone who's going to die is probably dead by now then uh it's so, like you can if you have like a radio nearby or like you can probably like go out to your car and like turn on the radio and like try to see if you can't pick up like emergency broadcast signals of head over to this safe house and then you can hope that it's safe because like at, with each passing second that you try to that you spend trying to get to that safe house their guards are facing the everyday struggles of zombies all over the place raiders all over the place yeah. Whether or not the raiders got to the food before they could, whether or not they have their own food production, and like all these different background elements going on, and all you're aware of is you're just hoping that they're uh, that they're even alive to begin with. You know, I like this idea because that that's exactly the kind of I, I always wanted to do a zombie game too, and that's the type of idea that I really really want because like it really like it's, and I feel like that is actually maybe in the past like. I think that may probably not a AAA developer because they would never allow this type of ambition. Oh yeah. But I feel like oh, an yeah, indie no, game AAA developer these days if an indie game developer had enough money and enough skill these days, I think they could pull that off. Cuz that that's I think that's within AAA? realistic. I think it's within yeah, realistic. Yeah, we did this when we were yeah. middle school. But like this could nowadays like we've gotten a lot better about do, with AI and NPCs. Oh yeah. I mean, like, that's not, and, and honestly, a lot of that are in some games. You know, we got Zomboid, we got um, State of Decay, that has the whole, like, you know, calls from random places. They're all scripted, yeah. but it's still, like, the same, it's very close to the same idea. Yeah, it's, it's basically just an open the same world thing, just instead really of, like, anything. scripted from a bunch of, like, possible scenarios, it's a bunch of, like, fundamental ideas, and then the scenarios are actually playing out. So it's not just calculating scenarios, they're actually happening. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Apparently, the term AAA games is a classification used within video gaming industry to signify a high-budget, high-profile game that is typically produced and distributed by large, well-known publishers. So, even if like a indie game, like an indie developer, were to somehow have the money and the capability of making a game like this, I think that would be like quadruple A at that point. Yeah, actually, yeah, I, mean, I, I can see that. I mean, like, uh, if you want to talk about. Like, yeah. If we want to talk about one more game idea, there is another one that James and I discussed when we were kids. Let's hear it. Uh, James, do you remember that ghost one that you made a trailer that matched up with the matchbook romance song, Monsters? Did you made a trailer yeah. for it? I, I, yeah, he I did. wrote, like, the script for a trailer for it. And, like, ah. wrote the script. The, you he know, wrote the, the story beats. Like, what you'd write before you start making an ad animatic. Yeah, exactly. Like camera pans across the fucking scene and shit like that, you know the the screenplay sort of. What's the what's the actual term? You're you're a drama nerd. You know that shit. No, because isn't the script just like what's said by the people, like the camera and the like engineers and like there's oh, no actors because it's all okay. animated. No, they do that too. We can have that in the script. That's still, that's yeah, still yeah. A, that, that's like that's still a script. script. Yeah, just depends on oh, who writes it, script. you know. Yeah. Fair. Anyway, we yeah. we discussed this game and we were so excited about it, but then James lost the notebook with all of our notes oh, in it. God. And like, and then after that, yeah. he just wouldn't touch the game anymore. Like, I kept trying to say, no, no, we can still think of it. We still have ideas, but he's like, no, I'm too sad. It's gone forever. 
I yeah, remember and, that enough, game. Well, that was exactly how I was when I lost it. I'm just like, no, it's gone forever. Like, I would constantly be thinking of this. Like, even recently, I think like the last I thought of this game idea was like three days ago. And, like, I kept, every time I th- I'm reminded of it, I'm always like, dude, I can just rewrite it. I have the whole thing in my fucking head. <laughs> exactly. I wrote exactly. down a lot of it. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Should I talk about the game idea? Or... Yeah, you talk about <laughs> yeah, it. Tell me what it's, it's actually game about. Idea. I just I'd like to know. <laughs> okay. So this is also this is another thing because one of my like one of my signature things with like game ideas because it's like a concept that I think would really revolutionize like games that involve like a world happening around you instead of just yours yes. basically the pause and play of everything going on. It's my favorite thing. Is, yeah is that instead of everything being calculated in the background and waiting on you is everything is happening you are playing hopefully playing your part but you're gonna have to actually like fucking hustle if you want to get mm-hmm. things done in time but uh so basically it's a game idea involving the thinning of the veil between our world and the land of the dead so ah. naturally as like as people start dying and like passing on, there's always a few who are left behind because they have unfinished business. They don't know how to pass on their stuff. And that's how we find ghosts. And so like fast forward to kind of to it's, it's futuristic. I didn't want it to be like sci-fi futuristic, like Neo Tokyo sort of thing. Like 20 minutes. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Like 20 minutes in the future sort of thing. Uh, (laughs) It's like, it's basically, uh, that if technology doesn't fucking skyrocket, which it probably would realistically, but fuck that. Uh, it's like there's enough ghosts left behind that it starts kind of confusing the balance because, you know, the veil is supposed to be what separates, you yeah. know, those who have had their had their fun to those who are still living. Yeah. But now there's a fuck ton of both. On both sides. <laughs> yeah. And so that starts kind of confusing some things. And so the veil starts to thin a bit more. And so, like, as the veil thin- starts to thin more, not only are there more ghosts as people, like, you know, die and are unable to move on, but also there are some kind of, like, holes that kind of open up that ghosts that have passed on find a means back. And oh. then <laughs> as they start good. coming yeah. back that starts confusing shit even more and the veil thins even more. And so it gets to the point where like, there's a lot more idea. It goes from like ghost hunting and like basically the 15th remake of Ghostbusters <laughs> to like ghosts are no longer in question. This is not a like f- philosophical debate. This is an actual problem. What are we going to do? And so <laughs> it's, <laughs> and so like when that when that starts happening like the ghosts are already like explaining to their friends on the other side that there is now a way back to you know try to get a second chance which isn't happening they're still fucking ghosts they don't have a body hey guys but, let's go spook people <laughs> i mean some yeah because you know there's occasional <laughs> assholes <laughs> <laughs> but like so that's a problem for the people because naturally whenever there's any sort of like potential invasion of any sort we're like oh shit how do we fight back yeah and so how do you fight back you really can't because <laughs> they're fucking ghosts <laughs> ignoring you know occultism and various beliefs on how to explicitly how to you know get rid of ghosts <laughs> do just you have a ghost of the chance exactly <laughs> uh so it's like on top of us already trying to like find a way to fight back against actual fucking ghosts. There's also the issue of base basically like the games the game's version of death also mm. notices the problem because ah. when there's a considerable lack of souls in their realm and suddenly a a huge influx of trapped souls on the other side then mm. yeah they Knee notice deep in the dead and so so death creates basically con- basically large constructs I was that we need to get to these 
Yeah. <laughs> so large constructs that are basically the embodiment of horror because how do you keep a, you, you know billions and billions at those are low ball numbers of yeah. souls in line through fear because that there is no feasible way to make everyone fucking happy at that point. <laughs> so these constructs referred to as guardians are normally kind of like the peacekeepers of the other side, but they have to be sent through these rifts as well into our world to, you know, send them back. But they were kind of created on the other side by ghosts for ghosts. They see the souls. They deal with the souls. They weren't exactly trained or even aware of our side. So when they're sent to send the souls back to the other side, everyone's a fucking soul. Whether you died or not, that is inconsequential. Oh, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. So the Guardians start sending everyone back. And so well, now it goes from, like, an accidental invasion of poltergeists to an actual invasion of armed, horrific monstrosities. Damn, and, dude. <laughs> yeah, and that's when basically humanity kind of falls. It's like because, evil destiny. Kinda, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so the like game eviler. officially starts somewhat after then. So like the human like humanity is kind of pushed underground because, you know, they they really don't stand a chance. If they are seen by the guardians, they are sent back because they are souls. So they have to hide. And so eventually like some spirits that kind of realize that they kind of fucked up. <laughs> like the the hippies of the ghosts are just yeah. like okay yeah we kind of fucked up this is kind of their land and so they the ghosts that don't want to be sent back end up actually taking out one of the guardians and so some of the ghosts that want to kind of you know give humanity a shot bring the Aww. bring the guardians like weapons and equipment to the humans for them to dissect and figure out how it works. And that's how humanity finally starts getting a fighting chance because now they can start, you know, working on replicating the technology to start actually affecting the ghosts. So oh, your character, yeah. the tutorial is your character is one of humanity's first, uh, first attempts at pushing back. So, okay, okay. So you're armed with completely experimental gear because the only like spirits that you can actually see are the ones that are trying to help you and you don't really need you really shouldn't be hurting them yeah. uh you know pr and all, whatnot pr <laughs> <laughs> you're hoping that this works you kill the so goodie you are sent after there's like there's another guardian that's you know taken up the taken up the the uh spot because you know that guardian was removed so the tutorial is your character going after going out there and fighting back against the spirits that don't want to leave as well as the boss fight of that guardian, which is just like in a lot of souls games kind of scripted to kill you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you can survive, then fantastic. You start off with some pretty nice gear, but if you're, you're basically scripted to get sent to the other side, so <laughs> yeah. your character okay, gets yeah. hit, sent to the other side. Now you're just a disembodied soul because it doesn't send your body to the other side, just the soul. Foul then undead. <laughs> some of the spirits that you are fighting alongside with that are also on the other side help kind of get help you kind of like get your get your uh, bearings and like figure out how being a ghost works. So you and get to learn like the like base... gravity stuff and stuff too, because like the gravity, yeah, like gravity yeah. manipulation, like being able to jump yeah. higher, or like being able to fly in some spots, or like being able I to like kind of shift in and out of reality to like affect your movement. Yeah, so being yeah, a yeah. ghost is a lot about like initially is a lot about mobility, because they're they're it's agile. It's the first thing to start. Yeah, exactly. No corporeal. And through this mobility, you can. You can uh, run, th rush through a uh, rift to get back to your body and hope that it works that way, which, of course, it does. But <laughs> as you're running back towards your body, like, you know, cutscene plays because cutscenes, yay. yay. So your character <laughs> see sees their body on the floor and immediately rushes for it. And another spirit sees your body and kind of thinks, second chance, question mark? 
It's free real and estate. So, <laughs> it's free real estate. And so fucking like a uh, little race cinematic of your character and the spirit rushing to the body. You both hit it at about the same time. Your character gets to it kind of first. But now basically your your body has two souls. <laughs> and this is where you officially become the ma- the protagonist. There you go. That's a cool idea, man. That, that I like that. That's a good backstory. A yeah. Good, like um, dude, that was a really good one. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you reminded me that like straight up, like I you asked me earlier if I if I ever wrote a thesis on something. I did. Like I I forgot <laughs> that I that I I thought about the, I still uh, you same thing. I still think about this game but i wrote like i remember like like the whole like i'll, I'll keep it brief because just just so you know and leave it for another time but Fair. like the whole but the idea is i wanted to make a i wanted to make a grand rpg kind of like kind of like in a jrpg style but with um but with some elements from from newer western ones like like origin stories and stuff like that and i remember like originally it, I, I really I, I i like i actually really made it hard to make it realistic because like originally I was like, I want like eight origins, you know? Yeah. And then I'm like, this is not plausible. <laughs> and so I cut it down to four and I wrote like, I start, wrote the beginning of four of them. And then one of them I completely finished like, like, and that, but just oh, yeah. that one was like 15 pages and I'm like, Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. And so I was like, I was like, Oh God. And that was only the footnotes, you know, they weren't like the, the full scripts. And I was like, Oh shit. Like, and even in that one, I was going to have, like, I wanted, I wanted, like, I'll just go to this part, and then I'll leave, like, a more detailed screen when we do this again. But I wanted Origins to be extremely important, kind of like from Dragon Age. Like, the Origins in Dragon Age, oh, it makes a big difference. Like, like, if you're playing the City Elf, it's like, you have no choice but to live in this little quarter your entire life. And then, like, I think, like, if you're, if you're, if you're a woman... Then like they try to sell you to this guy, like they try to sell you to this guy, and it's like oh my god, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and so like and so yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like for for like marriage, and it's like what the fuck? And then like if you're if you're like a if you're like fucking dwarf who's rich, you have like orgies every day and shit like that. So the whole, the difference in origins is made, and that's kind of what I want in this game. But like the origins, I, what I what I wanted the origins to do is to act is to give you. Is to give is, is, is to make it so you have to choose like basically four different play styles, and you weren't stuck to these play styles. But depending on how you played these origins, um, you would get like a tra- you would like a, like a bonus trait in that. Like in the one that I re- wrote fully, um, you're in a hive city in Doggerland. Do you know what Doggerland is? By any chance? I do not. So it's the place. It's where the um, it's where the 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 strait between France and England is. Before the Ice Age, before the gotcha, yeah, and so it used to be a big land called Doggerland. So my idea was like, you know, we've used so like, like so many like maybe like this is kind of fucked up because it's like, basically we've used so much like resources that we've even u- that we've even started like using making dams in the ocean and stuff like that. And the whole idea is that like, this is like, um, this is like it like what do you call it? Uh, high technology but in decay. So not quite cyberpunk. It's more like, like post cyberpunk, where it, where like basically most of the technology we have is just completely, is just what it is. Like we 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 we're back to old technology because we can't understand the newer technology anymore. And I also kind of wanted like I wanted it to be like a, a big three thing. Like you choose between either being very human, very mach- like very science based or very like spiritual based. And I'll get into that more. But like. And the hive thing, like you start off in these vents, and you either have to choose, and like, and you're hungry, and you're like a kid, and you either have to like steal, you have to make friends with someone to help you, you got to beat someone up, or you, or you like, or you like, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, like those three, those one of the, one of those four things to get food, and that, and then you get a trait from it, like. If you had to run, if you like, and just being in that, just having that origin would give you a trait too. It make it so it was easier for you to get around vents in the game. Like, if someone couldn't get around vents for the other playthroughs and your from your playthrough, you could go through vents because you had lived in them for your early life. And then just those things that like had so many, 
different things. And I, and I wanted that. I wrote the entire thing out, all the all the paths out just for that for one of them. I said I didn't finish the other three, but the whole idea of the game is I wanted it to be completely, like, completely like I, the world doesn't work around you, but what you how you affect the world is extremely big, no matter what you do, and to the point where like I wanted to make it so like. If you when you when you when you discover a new place to visit, like you can either one just go in regularly, or you know if if it's a place you have to get to, you have to get permission, or you have to find, and then after that you have to find a way to get there. Like if it's in the middle of the desert, you can't take a boat there. You have to find, and there might be like a big wall or something. You can't just like drive there. You have to find like you know like a helicopter or something to get you there, or some other way, you know. And then after that, I thought like. You could get to the point where you don't even care about, like, if you want to check the place out, you don't even care about the people there to where you could, like, use your money to hire, like, a like a, a sweep team to just kill everyone there, and then you can just, Jesus. you know, or detain them. Or, or, like, you could make, or you could, like, make a deal with, like, a demon who just likes to eat people's souls and go, hey, can you just, like, can you, like, eat that entire facility? And they're like, well, all right. And then they're just everyone's just gone. Oh, I'm getting paid yeah. for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so that that's that's what I want. That's that was the basic idea of that kind of stuff. And again, I have a whole, you know, I I I wrote whole things about this. And I even I'm not even kidding you. I put like, you know, this again. This is way ambitious. But I I even <laughs> had like other like whole ideas that would be too big for the game to implement. So it would be good for side games, like. Thanks. Because like I I always find it weird about saying this because I always have like the hope I'm gonna make this but since I doubt that's gonna ever gonna happen I'll just say it but one of the ideas I had was something called necro diving where it's basically Sorry? so the whole so this is like post this is post post apocalypse like we've already rebuilt things and people are already living regular lives but there's still areas of the world like that a are just gone film? yeah but the, there's still areas of the world that are just gone so we have huge cities now. And we have stable governments, but there's some places that just aren't accessible anymore, you know? So, and one of them I thought, like, a whole industry is going to areas of metropolis, like Tokyo and, and um, Singapore um, and stuff like, and, you know, Taiwan, stuff like that, where you can just, and the whole thing is that people make these giant drills and corporations pay them to dig in, to, to dive, to dive into these, you know, huge places that are covered in dirt that used to be huge shopping centers or, or live quarters, you know, these huge hive areas, and just dig into them and find artifacts and bring them back up to the surface. And that was the whole, that, that was a fun. whole, yeah, and that was a Artifact whole separate the game. World. Sounds kind of uh, Brotherhood of Steely. Yeah, I like that. That's what, I, that's what I got the idea from. Like, But this is more as like a mercenary job. Like, he goes, okay, you need to bring, ba- you know, you need to bring back something from, but here, you know, we've, we found... We believe from old maps there's like a if you go down this way and this way there's a there's like an old theater and we think it has some good you know you might get old media from the old, old world and then you know your contract is to get media from this uh we'll give you this much to fu- to, for, to pay for gas and shit like that and then like you slowly <laughs> build up your crew and your uh and your vehicle your necro contract is to find me a working copy of spirited away Exactly. <laughs> hey, that no, that that, that that's a, that's literally what I thought. Like something like that, where it seems it's mundane on now. Castle. Yeah, exactly. So that's like the basic. Like, like, I can go way be deeper. Given an than actual that. moving castle. <laughs> I can go way deeper than that, but that's basically the idea of it. You know, I really it it's it's kind of like the thing that that's I really spend a lot of time on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. We definitely we have, have time for one topic. more short one. Yeah, know. go ahead. What raft, but on a train. Go ahead. You and up to nine friends have survived the apocalypse because one of you, whoever's hosting, was a train operator. Uh, during Ooh. the day, th- yeah, during the day there are horrific creatures, and the only way to survive is to be constantly on the move and be fast enough that they cannot catch you. At night, oh. you can leave the train and hope you don't run into like hostile survivors or lesser beasts, which are smaller but faster. As you search for resources to repair and upgrade oh, your train, you. feed and water your party, and repair any broken bits of track you come across. Hopefully before daylight comes. During the day, you could tend to, like, the garden, and do repairs around the train or maintenance, and the weapons to, tra- to chase off greater beasts that are, like, larger but slower. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I you like know, that well, idea. That's a good idea. It wouldn't make sense in terms of a train, but then again, neither would 
being able to keep going forward at all. No, like, I, I think it makes sense. Like, I think it would well, be I mean, great like, to have, a, like, yeah. oh, you know, I was, I was going to continue with the, uh, like, you so I know that uh, Marigold has not played Dead Space. Have you played Dead Space, uh, Kai? I have, I yeah, haven't I played, played Dead Space, Space, but I did just watch Charlie Slimesicle play Dead Space. Oh, I don't know who that is, I don't but know that, that is sounds either. suggestive. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of is. He, he, stole my, he stole my porn name, I'll uh, tell you that. Slimesicle? Yeah. <laughs> don't judge it until you try it. I'm judging. Gross. Anyway... <laughs> But like, kind of like how in the Dead Space games, there would always be like nodes that you can either like yeah. use to upgrade your stuff, or you can hold on to them to unlock like rooms with more like equipment and like more stuff. You can have a thing where it's like you can like if you can repair like the train and whatnot, but then you there's also like some some material that could like you know normally used in upgrades and especially like the really important ones, or you can hold on to them to repair like incredibly damaged side rails that you might occasionally oh, come atro- across to cool like idea. come in, to like an old like train station to loot some really old stuff. Hey, I like I, that. That's a good one. All right, remember guys, I, I if any of you somewhere. if also, any of you game uh, developers if any of you yeah. game developers use these ideas, you owe us royalties. Yeah, you have 20%. to come back to us. <laughs> uh, full disclosure real quick. I got this idea by combining Raft with uh, Choo Choo Charles. Oh, I have not played yeah. Choo Choo Charles, should I? That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. What, playing Choo Choo Charles? Oh, Choo Choo Charles is amazing because it, like, it looks like absolute horse shit. But it's, hey, it's one just, guy it's oddly built fun. it. Like, come on. It's pretty great considering only that doesn't, one guy that, Hey, it. that doesn't mean I can't call it horse shit. It's still a, it's a good it's, game. It's a good game. That's the thing. Is that, you know, it, it may not look like much, but it's an amazing game. And honestly, Charles is, is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, Charles. Like, he, he is scary as fuck, dude. Like, yeah, I would want to run like. across Charles in the middle of the night. Hey right, guys, so if you if you want to remember, you guys owe us royalties if you want to buy if you want to use our ideas. We do need to hit this topic again though, because there's a lot of ideas. Oh yeah, there's like, so many more. Oh, so Mary many. Gold, you you and I need to go over like the next time we hit the topic that game that we were thinking of that uh, we thought of with the Far Cry thing of like the past lives and like how each game was like. Oh going right, right, right. Time. That whole series. Yeah. Ooh, be I cool. can't wait to hear. Were you thing. magic and I was technology, or was I magic yeah. and you were technology? No, uh, you were tech. I was you. I think you liked the idea of steampunk tech, but I was like more right, magic. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a great idea. So yeah, later. Topic again. Later. Stuff <laughs> later. To be bye a bye. God.